Hello my dears, every now and then I get a weirdly large amount of the exact same question just completely out of the blue, um, and then I decide to make a video about it so that I don't have to continue to answer the same question a million times, and I can just instead be like, great question! Here's a link with the answer! Um, so now you know, life hack, if you want me to make a video about something, get like maybe seven or more people to message it to me on Instagram, um, and it'll get answered sooner rather than later. Sometimes. Depends on how emotionally tied I am to the video schedule in my giant spreadsheet that I'm currently working like a month and a half in advance or behind. I have everything, most everything for September is already planned. But anyway, the video that was in today's slot was one that I've been avoiding for a while, so we're gonna avoid it a little longer. Um, you know what this video is about because you probably read the title, um, but in case you didn't or something, I don't know, today we're going to talk about the intersection of autism and driving and how I, as an autistic person, went from panic attacks every time I sat in the driver's seat to absolutely loving driving. Um, I really intended to film this in my car, I really genuinely did, and then I brought my camera and my transcript outside and I realized how there's no space for that and also it's way too hot outside for that, so we are stuck here. My sincere apologies. Also, we're all gonna pretend that this tank top is some sort of like vintage Audrey Hepburn-esque shirt and not a random tank top that I found because I'm warm. Yeah, so I didn't really know until I became a part of the autism community that it's generally assumed that autistic people either don't or cannot drive, which honestly, I wish I had known earlier even though I didn't know that I was autistic at the time because I personally held a lot of shame about these struggles that I was having with driving. I didn't understand why I was so nervous and why I couldn't do it and why I hated it when every other person I would talk to would be like, oh, it gets better. You're gonna love it. Don't worry about it. Because like I started to worry that maybe I never would like it and I would just be stuck hating it forever and that I would be the odd one out. I mean, obviously I could use public transportation, but that system is so inaccessible and it has terrible communication and loud noises and bad seats and social pressures and lighting issues and I never really saw that majorly as an option for myself back then either, so I didn't know what to do. Now what I can say today is that once you figure out public transportation and get a solid system down, it becomes a lot less stressful. I am a pro at the Italian train system um, and at the local bus system at my college and I think I might be growing to maybe understand slash like the New York subway system? But that does not make them any more accessible than they already are. I've just figured out personal tips and tricks to make it suck less, if that makes any sense. But either way, please know that it is completely okay if you do not or cannot drive. There is absolutely zero shame in that and there are lots of other options of getting from place to place. And please, please do not feel like there is something wrong with you if you cannot drive or you struggle a lot with driving or you get a migraine every time you drive. That is fully and completely valid for so many reasons, which we are going to get into shortly. But First, we are going to talk about my personal driving story. So where I'm from in the US, or maybe this is consistent across the US, I don't... I don't know about that one, let me know in the comments. You are allowed to start taking driver's ed classes at age 15 and 10 months. I don't know why it's so oddly specific, but that's what it was. So that was when I was in the fall of 11th grade. There are a few ways that you can get your, I believe it's 33 hours in my state, um, to get your driver's ed where I live. Um, most kids opt to do them in a bunch of short sessions that you schedule over the span of like two-ish months. Um, when I was in high school, I had three jobs. I did them for fun when I was little and then I got paid for them when I was older. So like, Maybe child labor, but anyway. Um, so I didn't really have the flexibility to do that. So we decided to go for the other option, which is the cram method, um, where I spent an entire three day weekend and then the entire following weekend, six to seven hours a day in a tiny desk at the driver's ed place. And my brain trauma has deleted most of that experience because it was miserable and I hated every second of it. Now, what I do remember is being really, really anxious going into it and specifically speaking with the teacher saying, could I have some sort of like accommodation to prevent panic attacks because I was having them all the time around then. And she told me that it was fine. I needed to get over myself. And um, then she decided that we were not scared enough about taking to the road. And so she played some of the scarier, more graphic, deadly, violent films for us several times in a row that was supposed to help. Um, I also used a lot of pages of my notebook to write the multiples of three, and I believe that I got to 300,000 by the end of Driver's Ed. So yeah, the thing is, is I obviously did not need scare tactics because I was already terrified of the road before I got into that classroom, which meant that after Driver's Ed, there was no way I was getting on the road. That was it. I was done. Not happening. So I got my permit and then we put it in a drawer for a while. And I don't remember when I actually started learning how to drive. I know that I finally got my license in the spring of senior year because my dad convinced me that if I didn't learn to drive before graduating high school, it probably wouldn't ever happen, um, which I logically made sense. So that is what I did. I would assume that I 
probably started learning in the fall of my senior year because during driver's ed was like literally during it was when my grandfather got sick and then he passed that spring so my house is a little a little crazy and driving up pushed under the rug for a bit but anyway so I had a miserable time learning to drive I hated every single minute of it I had many panic attacks at the wheel I cried a lot at the wheel just like driving and sobbing um I also always had a migraine after driving whether that was for 10 minutes of driving or an hour of driving and also there is a thing in my state where you get a huge discount on insurance if you do six hours of driving with an official instructor so I did that and he only booked in two hour long sessions which is way too long and also he wasn't great and that was terrible I barely passed my driver's test I got my license I put it in the permit drawer and then I stopped driving I knew the bus system at my school was fine um, and as an adult I plan to live in New York City probably so I'm not really gonna need to drive too much um, but then it became a running joke in my household that oh Sydney doesn't drive oh Sydney refuses to drive Sydney hates driving blah 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 for some reason that was a funny thing to make fun of me for um, and then I was dating a not so nice person who was vaguely obsessed with the fact that I had my own car and was pressuring me to start driving again so I could bring my car to school so that they could use it because it wasn't fair for me to have my own personal car and to never use it when they didn't have their own and they loved driving. Which is a point of view. Um, also the fact that that car was inheritance from recently deceased grandfather made their point of like, oh, you're so privileged for having a car, it's not fair. Just a little messed up. But anyway, so all of that pressure from absolutely every single direction made me completely shut down altogether and then solidly refused to drive. I, I didn't drive for a long time but then we had a pandemic and also recovering from a little bit of brain damage so no need to drive there because there was nowhere to go and also my brain could not handle leaving my room at the time so driving wasn't gonna happen but then that summer i got a job that involved a for 30 minute morning commute every day um that i had to drive myself so back to driving i went because i had no choice and that's when i discovered how beautifully incredible solo driving is you get to dj without worrying about other people potentially judging you for your music or if you should control the volume for them or whatever there's no small talk it's easier to focus on driving you can stim as much as you need to in order to be less overwhelmed by said driving you know that for the next set amount of time you are going to be doing this thing and nobody's going to bother you and nobody's going to change that up because you are in a car by yourself you can wear sunglasses on rainy days without feeling like you're being judged for doing so and also the level of freedom that comes with just knowing that you can up and go somewhere if you want to is really really incredible i still do get a little bit panicky when there's a lot of cars around me because i trust myself at the wheel um and i don't trust anybody else so being around other people is terrifying i still get really stressed in parking lots but i generally do love driving i love having alone time to focus on other things in between tasks in an environment that i have complete control over because that is so rare and it helps me to be better regulated if that makes sense so yeah that's my driving story i hope that you liked it now we're gonna go through the struggles of driving that i've managed to figure out how to put into words and then a couple of solutions and tips that i found that work for me and then you can add yours in the comments we'll make it a collective resource guide um also some of these ideas are from other autistic creators videos i will link those for you in the description i'm not just gonna steal other people's content that's bad so the first part of driving that was really difficult for me was how you gotta focus on a gazillion things you gotta look at the road you gotta look at all your mirrors you gotta listen to what your teacher or just the other person in your car or if your teacher's your dad then there's extra levels there ha huh? um all of that what they're telling you the speed that you're going the directions of where you're going and there's road noise and sun glare or rain and the physical motions themselves of driving that takes a while for those to become intrinsic um the actual coordination it takes to drive a car like remembering where the windshield wipers are or what direction your directional goes when you click it it's up to the right because you go that way and it's down to the yeah also as an autistic person my brain focuses on all the minutiae of everything so i really struggle to look at the big picture in general so all of these many million things that i need to pay attention to are broken down into 100 million other teeny tiny pieces in my brain and then all the sensory input of other cars i know there's a billboard and oh what animal did that roadkill used to be can i have a moment of silence for that i'm really sad about it etc 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 and then also the general anxiety of oh i'm in charge of a big hunk of machinery that kills an absurd amount of people every day and people are putting me in charge of that and that's okay for some reason so the fact that i got migraines every time i drove and had a lot of panic attacks is actually perfectly reasonable in my opinion not that i could really articulate any of this back then and just kind of thought there was something defective or wrong with me um but looking back it makes so much sense that was completely logical but everybody was telling me it was illogical so i thought i was messed up yeah also there's a whole aspect of how driving is taught 
Because as I mentioned earlier, driver's ed is a lot of fear mongering to try to make you a smart driver and they refused to give me any accommodations at all whatsoever. So I was just terrified. And then in one-on-one -on -one lessons, you have the feeling of, oh no, I can't do anything right because you are always being corrected. By the time you fix one thing, you have to correct another thing. And you know, any tiny piece of confidence that you might be building up just completely gets absolutely destroyed straight out of the nearest window. Not to mention the amount of times that I would slowly start braking with enough distance so as to not jerk my head on fast brake impact because that's what makes me sick and having my co-driver yell at me to brake and then hitting the auto brake or take total control of the wheel when I had it covered, you know, because they're just used to kids who slam on their brakes last second and they need them to do a manual override so they don't die. And that is so incredibly stressful and overwhelming and horrible. And it really makes you never want to get in a car again when you think you have control and somebody suddenly takes control. Cause that's just a lot. Also the whole small talk situation, always unpleasant. And also during the test, it is a similarly toxic and stressful environment. You have weird small talk and a guy who has no facial expression and a clipboard that he keeps writing on as you drive. And he doesn't always explain the things that he wants you to do in the most straightforward manner. So you can also get very easily confused. It's terrifying. And the more scared you get, the more mistakes you make and the worse you drive. Huzzah. Um, my dad told me after my test that where he's from, the tests are typically done by a local state trooper and he vividly remembers shaking the entire time. And I would just, I would love to know why this is the vibe that we continue with because that seems like a very broken system. But anyway, also you're not allowed to play music or even wear sunglasses during your test. So that is very inaccessible. I also think there is a culture, or maybe this is just a me thing, around shaming people or teasing people who don't drive. Like, if you can't drive, you are not an adult or something like that. And that makes you just feel terrible about yourself for setting a boundary. And in my case, I was actually like about to be brave, about to want to go and try driving again. And I felt ready to do that. But since I was being bullied and teased about it so much, it made me way more afraid of it. And that delayed me from gaining the ability to drive because of that outside pressure. Other bits of the driving part, um, I'm a very rule oriented person and I like to try to follow them to the T because in theory, if I follow the rules, that means everybody else will follow the rules because that's how being on a team works and everything's gonna be fine. But if you know anything about society, <laughs> that's not how being on a team works apparently. Um, and so there's so many situations where I have to break the rules for safety and anticipate that other people around me are going to inevitably break every single rule, who knows which one. And that is very stressful for me. I mean, we have directional lights and speed limits for a reason, but people don't use either of those things. And that often makes me feel very overwhelmed and very stressed because I don't know what to expect. Driving also takes navigation skills and I don't have those. Luckily phones work as GPSs because if they didn't, I would probably still be lost somewhere in the middle of rural Massachusetts, like living with a cow or something. Um, also, obviously you need to have spatial perception skills in order to drive so that you know how to not hit other cars and whatnot. And my spatial and depth perception is very wacky. Like if somebody is a regular safe distance behind my car, I'm fairly convinced that they're like, like inches from hitting me and I'm about to die. Um, hence why I don't look in the rear view mirror as much as I was formerly told I need to do for safety. And I also get really anxious when cars are right next to me because in my brain, they're gonna slide over and they're gonna smush me and it's gonna be a little car sandwich. Um, I also have some motor control issues. So if I do the full body turn to look to see if somebody's in my blind spot before changing lanes, I will inevitably forget how everything works and I will swerve out of the way. So I instead of position my mirror so I can see just the corner of my blind spot and I only change lanes when it is very, very clear that it has been completely clear for a bit. I also accommodate my slow reflexes by braking a little earlier and keeping more space between myself and other cars. But finding these teeny tiny little tips and tricks and accommodations for yourself can be so much harder when you're first learning because first of all, you don't have the experience or like don't even pay attention to know what your needs might be. But also because the people who are teaching you to drive probably haven't had to realize or verbalize what their own personal accommodations are. That being said, I will say that there are driving instructors for people with special needs. I have a friend who was born with um, some brain differences. And so her mom found her an accessible driving instructor. Those do exist everywhere. Um, I don't know if that would have been an option for me as a very anxious person when I could have used it because I didn't have any specific behavioral diagnoses or brain neurological diagnoses at the time. Um, and I don't know if they're accessible to everyone. I do not know how the system works, but if you think that you need one might be a really great thing to look into. Um, I was also mostly taught to drive by my parents. And I think that their anxiety compounded onto mine, compounded onto like 
our relationship as a family just wasn't great for my own education. So if I could do it again, I would probably just find a teacher that I really connected with and just done all of my lessons with them. Some other ways to minimize anxiety include planning for everything beforehand. So for example, my parents and I once sat down and we talked about the scripts of what to do in case of an accident, what to do if you get pulled over, what to do if there is a big storm while you're driving, what do all of these different buttons in the car mean, what if you swerve, what if you etc 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 and how those things work. So that was really helpful because if something starts to happen and I get panicky, I know that I know what to do. I also almost never drive with passengers to minimize issues there. I listen to music and sing along in order to stim as I drive, which makes coping with the overwhelming bit of it easier. I always wear sunglasses regardless of weather and I always have maps on. If it's a route that I have done without maps before, like my daily commute, I pretty much know I will keep it on, but I will turn off the sound. So I just have the route there so I can double check in case I space out. So yeah, that's all I have for you today. I would love to hear what kinds of accommodations you've all figured out for yourselves and your driving experiences. I think it's really great to put all those in here. They're very important. But yeah, as, as always, thank you for listening. Thanks for learning. Remember, it's never too late to start over and I look forward to seeing you, my dear, in the next one.